Welcome to Johnson County Community College's section of Acting 1. This is the second course in a sequence of acting classes that the students here take. So they have to pass successfully Fundamentals of Acting before they are allowed to take Acting 1. This week, the last couple of weeks, we've been working on something called specificity. Specificity is an exercise where um, we're, we're trying to deepen our work as actors. We are trying to identify and personalize the information that a playwright has given to them. So each of the students have chosen a small monologue that was a, kind of prescribed to them from a series of monologues. And um, they have to create an incredible backstory to justify everything that they are saying in this specificity monologue. They're going to treat it like an audition because one of the things that we're really working on in here is how to audition properly when they are going out into the field, whether academically or professionally, to try to secure roles. So audition techniques and specificity work is what we're all about. So we're, you're all doing it today. This is a, uh, it's a preview graded assignment. You'll do it again next week for another grade. This is like step two in the process of three steps to get this exercise completed. So, Lauren, if you'll come up and, and, and go first. Hi, my name is Lauren Hamilton, and I will be doing a piece from Sally's Gone, She Left Her Name by Russell Davis. I don't want to be home. I want something more. I want what Grandpa had. I want how he painted, like his girl. I want to be the girl that Grandpa painted. I don't want to be like us. More than anything I know, I want to be in that picture. I want to go wear that, that white headband that she has around her head and that t-shirt. I want that extra large t-shirt that's so light you can see through it. And I want to go running like that in the middle of the night. More than anything I know, far away from anybody, any town, any teachers, family, just Run, up and down, visit the oceans, the mountains, everything, because I think that if I could do that, if I could just be like that little girl, like spirit all over again, if I could do that and not miss all the stuff, I mean everything, my life, the people, the things to do, then, then I would be happy. Thank you. All right, how did that go? Uh, I definitely worked on making each thing specific. Like I okay. tried to put a picture, so every word I tried to okay. say, I was like, well, what does that mean? Well, this and this and this All and right. this and this. So let's talk about to, to whom you're, you're, you're speaking. Who are you? Remember, a monologue, folks, is not really a monologue. It's a dialogue that you're having. You always have to think of it as a dialogue. You just happen to have all of the words in this particular moment. But it is a, it's an ongoing conversation that you were having with someone. So to whom are you speaking? I'm speaking to my grandmother. Um, my Why? uncle has recently died. Mm -hmm. And so has my grandfather died a couple years ago. But my uncle has recently died. So it's kind of the family kind of recovering over that. And my uncle and my grandfather were the only ones that actually had any spirit, that actually lived life and loved life and had that escape. And, and we've always been the ones that have always worried about everything, always kept it safe, always vicariously lived through them. And now that they're there, she's trying to get me here to be stuck here. Okay. And I don't want either of us to be like that. I want to enthrall her. I want to take a chance for once in my life. I want to be like they were because okay. now they're gone. So what specifically is this discussion about? I mean, what, what has transpired? Like... You can't have any more cotton candy. You, you, you can't go to college. You, you can't have this baby. I mean, what is it that has triggered this? What's the event? We're sitting in the kitchen and we're discussing, you know, everything that happened. And my, my mother is the one that I'm supposed to be going back to my life, um, wherever I'm living, say I'm living mm -hmm. in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And she's telling me that I have to stay here. 
my, your mother needs you, you need to stay here, you need to put that on hold for a little okay. while, and that's the last thing I want to do because no one's the same here. It's just depressed walls here. I don't want to be here. What's going to happen if you don't get what you want? If I don't get what I want, then my life is pretty much going to be doomed to walk in the same steps that they were. It'll be nothing. Everything that I've worked so far to get where I am is going to be worthless because they're bringing me two steps back. Okay. And they're my family and I love okay. them, but that kind of jeopardizing our relationship okay. by not doing what they want. Okay, so we're gonna start this over and I want you to make it even more specific. I mean, that sounds great, right? I mean, it's it's great. But do you, do you sense a generality about what Lauren is saying? There's nothing really specific. You have to pinpoint exactly what it is that you're wanting. Okay. Exactly, down to the last grain, okay? So I want you to just to think about that for a second. We're not gonna do the whole monologue again. We're just gonna start it off. And I want you to really struggle to find the words to say. One of the things that Lauren does is she polishes. She makes her stuff nice and shiny, takes all the rough edges off. I want you, Lauren, this semester to really work on, on allowing those rough edges to be there so that your character work is sloppier. Not unprepared, I'm not saying that just rougher around the edges so that you're not trying to make it pretty. You tend to make things pretty, right? Okay. Okay, so roughen it up. Take a razor blade metaphorically and just, just sharpen things up a bit, all right? I want you to work on that. I also want you to work on one of the acting habits that you have, which isn't, it's, just, it's not that bad, but it's something that you do in real life. Remember, as actors, you wanna to try to get more neutral in what you are doing as people, gestures, inflections, you wanna get more neutral. You wanna be a little more boring, right? So that you become a blank canvas on which you can then construct stuff, right? What's, what's Lauren's thing that she does? Yeah, That's it's the way that she uses her hands, right? It's really, Very fluid, it's, it's kind of, I don't know, it's, you do, so do. See, she does that. She does that. And this is kind of, it doesn't say anything, does it? It's, immediate, it's kind of like a non-committal gesture. And you do that in real life, too. Just kind of not. And when you point, it's interesting, when Lauren points, she tends to point like that. Right? <laughs> so that's just something that I want you to start catching in yourself and, and, tr and just work outside your own box and try to figure out what else you can do with those hands? I don't care if you stuff them in your pockets. I mean, we do that all the time as people. I know you, you know, your, your high school teacher probably said, get your hands out of your pockets. Well, it's because, it, it, because we do it sometimes when we're, we're feeling awkward and uncomfortable. But in reality, we use pockets, we use them. So there's nothing wrong with you using them occasionally, right? Finding other things to do, scratching your head, twirling with your hair, playing with something. Now again, the trick is, you don't wanna make it look like the actor is nervous and fidgeting. You wanna make sure that it's a clear character choice, right? So, we're gonna start over. We're, I'm gonna impose, I'm gonna make you do something different. So just, I'll stop you. More specific, struggle to say what you wanna say and, and, get what you, and get what you want and find something different to do with those hands. Oh, wow, okay, here we go. Oh, wow. I don't want to be home. I want something more. I want what Grandpa had. I want how he painted like his girl. I want to be the girl that Grandpa painted. I don't want to be like us. Okay. Huge difference. Do you see the difference? Huge difference. You, 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 look at you. You kind of went someplace emotionally that, that you didn't expect to go to because you weren't worrying about cleaning it up so much, right? This is the direction you need to go okay. in all your work, even that work up here that we're doing in the show. Yeah. Okay. All right. Off you go. Oh. Who's next? Hello, I'm Nick Zielsdorf. 
And I'll be performing a piece from Sally's Gone, She Left Her Name, by Russell Davis. Well then, I don't want to be home. I want something more. I want what Grandpa had. I want how he painted. Like that guy. You know that guy that Grandpa painted? I don't want to be like us. More than anything I know, I, I want to be in that picture. Something like it. I want to wear that wide headband he's got around his head. That t-shirt. God, that t-shirt. I want to wear that extra large t-shirt that's so light you can practically see through it. And I want to go running like that in the middle of the night. More than anything I know. Far away from anybody. Any town. Any people. Teachers. Family. Just run up and down. Visit the oceans and the mountains. Everything. Because I think if I could do that, I don't know, be some kind of little spirit all over again, I think if I could do that and not miss all the things in my life, the people, the things to do, then I'd be happy. Thank you. How'd that go? Um, it felt surprisingly well. Okay. Why did you choose to stand? Why did I choose to stand? Mm -hmm. Um, because I'm standing. Because I'm standing in my scene. Because in my in my circumstances, I'm standing. Oh, okay. What is your relationship to the person you're talking to? She is my grandma. And? And I'm standing in my house. We have uh, my, my my family. My parents homeschooled us, but my grandma ended up doing most of the schooling. Mm -hmm. But uh, in in recent in the last five years or so, she's been overwhelmed with just everything because it seems like. She's taken it upon herself to like do everything, mm -hmm. and so I'm I'm standing with her she, late at night, like God, like two in the morning sometimes. She'll be sitting at this school table in the corner, and I come up and I walk through, and I stand there and I talk to her, and we, we talk about a lot of things, but it's it's difficult sometimes because she takes all this responsibility, but she doesn't want to recognize that there are any problems mm -hmm. ever. And so if, if I ever bring anything up, she, she goes into this personal offensive mode, even if it may be something conducive, like the shower's broken, let's fix it. Mm -hmm. it, it, it drives me up a wall, because I love her to death, but I'll be standing there talking to her, and, and I, can't, I can't do anything. And we were talking about my little brother. His, his schooling's kind of suffered a bit in the last mm -hmm. several years. And he, like, I got out and learned how to deal with people, how to manage my life, so to speak. I mean, I still suck at it in some regards, but he, he's kind of been forgotten about. I have three brothers total. It goes my oldest, second oldest, and me, and then my little brother, Matt. And uh, he, he doesn't know what to do outside of this house. And, and I keep telling him, well, you, you guys need to get him out, at least get him in youth group or something. Mm -hmm. And they, then the moment that what she says that, that starts off the monologue is, well, I'd, be, I'd been talking about how we need to do things, get him to do things, and, and she says what she always says, and she says, well, well, darling, he's not your responsibility. And I hate that because if my parents have been kind of, I mean, I love my parents, but they've been involved elsewhere. Uh, I'm gonna stop you for a second. How much of this is your own life? A lot of it. Oh, okay. Because it feels like it is. Yeah, it is. Right? Feels like it is. Okay. He's, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So now you have to, what's interesting is when you use concrete examples from your own life, you tend to feel an obligation to stay true to the facts. And when well, you stay true to the facts, sometimes they're not as theatrical as what you can make them. All right? Okay. So I want you to now take Take that next step. What's going to happen if your grandma doesn't help your younger brother? Okay. What, what's going to happen? God, I don't even know. My mind tries to avoid that a lot. Ah. Um, uh huh. <laughs> That's called your stakes, right? You have to raise your personal stakes. In other words, you have to create life or death situations. So I, without telling us what it is, I want you to create a life or death situation that will affect your brother okay. Okay. if you cannot get through to your grandma. All right, now, okay, 
Next question. What is it that you are wanting to do to grandma? What is it that I'm wanting to do? Yeah, remember that objectives, intentions, goals, right? Stanislavski's objectives come in kind of two flavors. You either want to do something to a person or you want something from them and then you got to figure out how to get that. So what is it that you are wanting? I want her to finally face some problems. I want to, I don't know, kind of shake her a little bit. What's that? Slap her awake. Hmm. Yeah. Slap her awake. That's, that's really difficult because sometimes I feel like I shouldn't, you know, uh -huh. do very much. But then there are those points that I get to where I'm just like, I, I can't take this crap. You know, it's interesting. Brittany said, slap her awake. And you really, that's, that, that frightened you. That was like, oh, I would never want to do that to my grandma. Even thinking about it makes me nervous, right? Right? You see that? Well, that's where you got to go. That's where you got to go. Mm -hmm. I think what's happened for you, Nick, in this monologue is the obstacle is much larger than your objective. And, and, and if the obstacle is too large, then you're already defeated. You've already lost. Actually, that, that would make a lot of sense in this. Okay, you've already lost. And yes. that's kind of what, and that's why I asked you, why are you standing? Because it feels like you are acting from the neck up. The hands were nervous, the feet were nervous, the rest of the body wasn't present wasn't engaged. and engaged in the scene. Okay, wasn't engaged. So you've got to get the entire body involved. Okay. And it's not like now I got to do something completely different, no. but you got to act from the toes up, not the neck up, the toes up. So be present. I'm not, I'm not just head on a pedestal speaking lines. That's correct. <laughs> All right. So we're going to okay. do it again. And one of the things that I really want you to, to think about this, and I want you to go ahead and do the introduction because Nick really, he, his, one of his troubles as an actor is that he is already into the moment of the first of the, the first moment of the scene before he does his introduction. I thought I did well this time. Mm, no. I've been, I've been, I've been running that, that first yeah. that moment Yeah, see before. Nick's already thinking about the monologue and so he's rotely delivering the introduction. Remember, the introduction is incredibly important and you have to be present and you have to engage this audience. You have to warm it up, you have to smile, you have to welcome them into your living room. And then you have to take that journey to get you to the first moment in the monologue. And we want to see that. We want to see what your process is, what your technique is. So warm up the introduction, do it, then take however long you need to take. There's no stopwatch. Take what you need to get yourself there and make sure that you don't respond. You don't pull the trigger on your first word. Do not pull the trigger until you are, you are compelled to by the person you're talking to. Okay? All right. Hello, I'm Nick Zielsdorf, and I'll be performing a piece from Sally's Gone, She Left Her Name, by Russell Davis. Well then, I don't want to be home. I mean. I want something more. I want what Grandpa had. Like, I want how he painted. Like that guy that he painted. I want to be the guy that Grandpa painted. And I don't want to be like us. More than anything I know, I want to be in that picture. Or at least something like it. I want to wear that extra wide headband he's got around his head. And that t-shirt, I mean, I want to wear that extra large t-shirt that's so light you can practically see through it. And I want to go running just like that, just like that, in the middle of the night, far away from anybody, any town, any people, any teachers. Okay, much better, yeah? Much more real, much more connected. It really was, all right? Now, remember that it's, you're doing it to her, not up here to yeah. yourself. You've got to really engage grandma. Get my stakes clear. Get your stakes clear. Okay. Make sure you're driving your point home because if, she, if you can't convince her, all is lost. Yeah. Little brother okay. 
It's going down a bad, dark path, right? Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So does that make sense? How does this apply then, but while the next person is getting ready, how does this apply to doing a whole show? Because when you're doing a whole show, because right now we're rehearsing um, because it can, which opens in a couple of weeks, which is why the set is kind of unfinished. Um, how does that apply? What? Does it apply? What applies? Uh, applying objectives and really wanting to impact somebody. I mean, do you do that every single moment of a play, of a two-hour play? What do you think, Dewan? I think you have to play every moment. You have to find your objective in every moment. You will have a super objective that you want. Right. But every moment you are learning something from your Right. So Dewan's in this play, right? And he's saying that you really have to have a super objective, which is it's what it sounds like, the overarching objective of the entire play. I want love. I mean, really, and frankly, there's not more than a dozen things that we want as people. We want to be loved. What else do we want as people? Acceptance. We want to be accepted. Happiness. We want happiness. We want our health. We want to right? be appreciated. We want to be appreciated. Right? So the overarching objective, the super objective, again, that's Stanislavski's term, then you as the actor have to figure out how to make that work throughout the play. Every moment, however, in a two-hour play is not equally important. It's, you know, because that's not how real life is. So you have to find the ebb and flow, the peaks and valleys. What is the kernel of the play for you as the actor? Where is your turning point? Where is your big moment of discovery? We look at monologues, audition monologues, as where is the moment of discovery? Where is that, that aha moment and when you're trying to find a monologue on your own, you're trying to find an audition monologue that has an aha moment, where you struggle, 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 try to work things out, and then, oh, yeah. And then the rest of that monologue is just kind of uh, the resolution. Really good aha moments in a good audition monologue happen about two-thirds of the way in. Those are the good monologues, two-thirds. Two thirds, three quarters of the way in. So you also, when you're doing an entire play, you have to have an aha moment. And we're going to talk with the with the actors and because he can in rehearsal next week about where is that moment for you? Where is that moment of discovery in the play that you're working up to? And then how does that impact the rest of the play? Right. So this is just a microcosm of what you would do for a, a full show. Okay. Who's the next person? My name is Erin Bacardi, and I'll be doing a piece from P Fat Pig by Neil Levitte. That's why I came back here, just to say that I don't do this, come after guys or anything. It's not like a regular habit or whatever. So I just thought, you should know that. I think you're really cute and nice and that sort of thing. Uh, you might already have a girlfriend or not find me attractive. I, I would just totally understand that. I, I would. But I really do hope you call me. Even just to talk on the phone would be nice. I mean, I, I, I would like that, even if we were just these phone buddies or whatnot. I think I would. Just don't be afraid, Tom. I think that's why I came here, just to tell you that. Please do not be afraid of me or taking some kind of blind chance or what people think. Because this could be so good. I mean, really, 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 really very much so. Thank you. How'd that go? Uh, good. I feel like I did some uh, stuff I hadn't done before. Yeah, with this is very different from Aaron, right? Yeah. Even very when I was different. rehearsing it, too. Like, uh, completely different from when I was rehearsing it. Right. So. 
Very different. Now, you, you, you hooked your thumbs to keep your hands from moving, yeah. but, but what happened? I still did it. And I, got I did the chicken wings. I could feel it the whole time. You just feel it because it's trying to come. It's trying to get out, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of just, it's just a technique. It's just rehearsing and getting comfortable and exploring. It's, you know, that's why I tell you as actors, you have to train like an athlete. You got to be in movement classes and dance classes. You got to take voice lessons. Train like an athlete all the time, okay? Not just when you get cast in a show. All right, so this is some really nice work. Nice moment-to-moment -moment work. Here's what was missing, the obstacle. The obstacle didn't feel very big. What's your obstacle? Uh, I want, uh, the obstacle is I don't feel, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I want this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and what, and what, okay, so past? here's what you have to, here's where you have to go next then. This is the first time you've said it, and it's going to be the only time you say it to him. This is it. This is your big chance. What if he laughs at you? What if he says, um, okay, uh, can we just be friends? Because... That was kind of a mistake. <laughs> what if, oh my gosh! What if a guy were to say that to you after you just dumped your heart out? That's what is not present. Okay. So it'll make you fight harder. It'll make you even more raw. It'll simplify this. Because you can get your hands out and do something, and you can... I was just really trying not to do the this because uh -huh. I do this a lot, yes, you do. which doesn't really make any that's sense. Doesn't, it yeah, doesn't say weird. anything, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's where you got to go with this. You want to let's try it from the top, and I'll stop you, and and let's see if we can increase that obstacle. Okay. I might try this. It might be. Yeah. Better. And and the obstacle and the stake in this case kind of go hand in hand. So if you don't get what you want, what's going to happen to you? Uh, I will be alone. Totally, forever. Forever, yeah. This is the only guy. This is your soulmate. You know he's your soulmate. Yeah. You know he is. I just need to convince him that yeah. he is. Because he doesn't know it yet. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's just try the beginning again. That's why I came back here. Just to say that I don't do this come after guys or anything. It's not like some regular habit or whatever. So I thought you should know that. I think you're really cute and uh, nice and that sort of thing. Uh, you might already have a girlfriend or not think I'm attractive. <laughs> I mean, I, I would just, I would be totally fine with that. I, I would. But okay. I... Okay. How'd that go? Not as good as before. No, no not at Why? all. Why? Why? I, I, I honestly don't... I think I was out of the moment. Yeah. I didn't do the prep yeah. time I did before. The, it, it became a bit acted. Definitely. Right? You feel yeah. that? Feel the difference? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It felt really wrong. Yeah. <laughs> good. Glad you saw that. Oh, yeah. 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 But, but I think this would be a great place for you to start. Definitely. Actually, I feel really good about yeah. it. Yeah. Good. Wonderful. Thank right? you. Good. It's so 